Welcome to ICB Financial Statements. We are going to have a look at study phase one in this first video, and specifically question one. As you know, with the ICB, uh, assignment one prepares you for the first test, assignment two prepares you for the second test, and assignment three prepares you for the exam. So let me share my screen so that you can follow. So here we have financial statement study phase one sample questions. And the first question is ratio analysis. Now ratio analysis simply means that if we know where to look for certain information in the financial statements and we know how to apply them, we know the formulas that we need to use, then by simply applying these formulas, we can see how well a company is doing. So they're going to give us a lot of information we're only going to use some of it. The following financial information relates to eco cabins at the end of the financial year. And so we have an extract from the general ledger. We have the trading account there and the profit and loss account. We have some additional notes that we will have to consider. Then we have the statement of financial position that is drafted for us. And then the requirement is calculate the following ratios for the year ended 30 June 2019 and comment on the business's profitability and liquidity. And then compare these figures with the following. So what do they give us? They say, go and calculate these three ratios given there. And know that for each of them, there is an average industry average, which which you have to compare your numbers. And you will also have to compare your 2019 numbers to the numbers that you achieved in 2017 and 2018. In the Excel document on sheet one, I simply went and I copied all the information that was given to you in the question paper. Now, when we get here to the first ratio that we need to calculate, the return on average, average owner's equity, I've marked the numbers given to us in green and everything else that we will require to solve this, I've also marked in green. So now if we go and look at the formula that you must know, because it's not necessarily given to you, the return on average owner's equity is the net profit divided by the average owner's equity multiplied by a hundred. Okay, so it's also in green. And then what I did here is I said, what are we looking for? We need owner's equity and we need capital and we need both owner's equity and capital if we are going to calculate the average owner's equity over the period because this capital it was is what it was at the beginning of the financial year and the owner's equity as stated there is what it is now at the end of the financial year so we simply add the two divide them by two and we get an average the other thing that we are going to need um, is the capital so the capital is given here as the net profit for the year um, and here is where we calculated it okay when we did our profit and loss account but because this information here this capital net profit amount here was taken here we actually can basically just look here at the owner's equity and liability in our statement of financial position and all the information that we need is right there to do this question. So let's do it. So we know the formula, it says net profit divided by average owner's equity multiplied by 100. Of course, we multiply by 100 in order to be able to express it as a percentage. So the net profit, this was read from our profit and loss account. It is that 365,000. Our average owner's equity will be what it was at the beginning of the year plus what it is at the end of the financial year divided by two. And when we 
do that, we get an amount of just over 1.1 million. And know that now that we have both the net profit and the average owner's equity, we can apply the formula and then we get an answer there that is 32.43%. You can put it in there under the calculated uh, little block there and then we can comment now what we can see clearly is that our average rate for owners equity increase in owners equity is more than the industry average so that is good we can say the return is higher than the industry average which is favorable and we can also see that uh, we have a favorable trend ourselves from 2017 when it was 27%, it went up to 30%, and now it is 32.43%. So we can say there is an improving trend since 2017, which is favorable. Now, when we consider that if you put your money in the bank, or even if you uh, put your money in the stock exchange, you will be lucky to get 10%, maybe 15%. But so the company is really doing well, giving a return of 32.43%. Now let's go and look at the next one. Next one is our current ratio. The formula for current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities to one. And so what it means is for every rand of uh, liabilities we have, how many rands of assets do we have? Because obviously your assets must be more than your liabilities or else you might be bankrupt. Um, at least technically bankrupt now what we can see is the industry average is two to one uh, that is what we had in 2017 improved to 2.1 to 1 in 2018 now we're going to calculate it for 2019. now anything between two and three is good if we get too close to three then possibly we should be doing more with our working cap capital especially since we are getting such a nice return for our owners okay so let's do that no way to find the information so we in this case we are going to look at this uh, light blue so first thing we need to know is we need to know our current liabilities actually we first need now current assets but the current liabilities is stated there for us in the statement of financial position and here the current assets is also stated for us it's given we don't have to add up the components ourselves we can just work with the totals so when we do that we will say that okay our current assets as we read it from the information given is 212,000. our current liabilities is 73,000 and a couple of cents and now that we have both, we can just divide our current assets by our current liabilities and we get 2.9. And then, of course, we must remember to say that is 2.921. We put it in that little block again there so that we, we can compare easier. And what we see is we see there is a positive trend from 2017. And we also see that we are way higher than the industry average so once again we say the return is higher than the industry average which is favorable and secondly there is an improving trend since 2017 which is also favorable getting a little bit on the high side though but and you can can choose to comment about that or not now we go and look at the last ratio that we are supposed to calculate. It's the trade debtors collection period. So what this is asking is how long does it take us to collect from the people who owe us money? And the formula there is average debtors over credit sales multiplied by 365 because we were told that we are supposed to work with 365 here. So let's go look here we know that the average industry is 40 days we started on 20 days which was only half that and which is excellent but then we went up to 30 days and we're going to see where we end up now just remember 
as the business gets bigger, we are giving different um, people better rates uh, and better terms. And so maybe now we even have one or two customers that is uh, only has to pay us in 90 days, not state day, but it would explain the trend. So what do we need to know? Well, we need to know what is our trade receivables now. We also know need to know what our trade receivables were at the beginning of the year if we're going to get an average. So if the trade debtors balance at the beginning of the year was 88 and now it is 77, we will add the two together and divide it by two to get an average. Okay. We also know because it is given here that 80% of our sales is on credit. And now, only thing we need to see is what was our sales, and the sales is given there as 975,560. So once again, we have all the information we need. Now we can answer the question. So we say, okay, so credit sales is our total sales times 80%, 780,000. Our average debtors is what it was at the beginning of the year, plus what it is now divided by two, which is just over 82,000. And so now we can divide these two, multiply it with 365 and get the number of days. And we see that it is 39 days. We take the 39, just transfer it there to the appropriate block so that we can again uh, do this analysis a little easier. And then we comment, we can say, see that it is still slightly better than the industry average, which is favorable. And here we have a negative trend, which might be taken as unfavorable, but it could be the result of more credit sales. So I would say if you answer this question, you can say collection is taking longer since 2017. Yes, that isn't favorable, but qualify what you're saying. It could be the result of just more credit sales. And that is how we answer this question.